Ladies, ladies, but I think it's just gentlemen, but if not, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, my name is Bryce Weiler. I was born four months premature with an eye condition called retinopathy of prematurity. And growing up, listening to sports was always really important to me. Being from the Midwest, like I know you have some guys here who played for the uh, Bobcats in Ohio, or your outfielder Mitch, who also does great work um, giving shoes to individuals who, who uh, need that uh, through your shoe contract, Mitch. So thanks for all the work you, you do with that. So being from the Midwest myself, listening to Big Ten commentators, not um, the Ohio State Buckeyes, uh, your pitcher uh, Tanner uh, played for during his uh, college career, but I grew up with uh, Brian Barnhart of the Illini and Don Fisher of the Indiana Hoosiers. And listening to those commentators, it really brought sports to, to, to me because I was able to get a vivid picture of the action happening on the field and I didn't think that I'd be able to be around sports since I cannot see but I was able to go to college and thanks thanks to the invitation of the former uh, Evansville Aces men's basketball coach Marty Simmons I was able to sit on the Evansville men's basketball bench now for some of you sitting on a bench may not be a treat whenever your manager has to pull you out for maybe not hustling so hard or swing at that 3-0 fastball he told you to take because he wanted you to get on first base for the walk but for myself, sitting on Evansville's basketball bench was one of the biggest treats and one of the biggest joys of my life. I was able to be around sports, players, coaches, and college basketball. All things I did not think that I would be able to do in my life because I cannot see. And it was really enjoyable to be able to shoot free throws before the game with Aces coaches and players and to visit with the coaches from all the various conferences like Greg Marshall of Wichita State and Ben Jacobson of Northern Iowa, even uh, the Ohio Bobcats came in with their former head coach uh, Saul Phillips one time. And you know, being around the players and coaches showed me that although I might never be able to live one of my dreams in life of being able to see that there's still people in this world who care about me and who want to help me have the best life possible and to help me overcome the obstacles and challenges in my life. Also, at Evansville, I commentated sports on the radio. And many people didn't think I could, I could commentate games on the radio since I can't see. But I did that by studying facts on the players and coaches and listening to the previous games of both teams, just like I did last night for your guys' enjoyable 6-2 victory over Hartford, listening to my friend Marco commentating your guys' game on the uh, radio broadcast. And so I had to prove to people there that I, that, that I could commentate, even though they didn't think I could. But another important part at Evansville was I had many students who helped me out with, with getting my food in the cafeteria. Now, I do know many famous baseball managers, uh, Clint Hurdle, Bud Black, who now manages Colorado. But just as important to me as the famous people I know in sports are the students who helped me out at Evansville, getting my tray or commentating with me, um, sitting with me for basketball games or shooting with me before home games, like my friends Maggie and Kylie from Evansville's dance team, my friend Colton, who was a student manager at Evansville, who commentated games to me when I was sitting on the bench. And you don't have to have a famous job title to really impact someone's life. For myself, having special needs, being blind, having those students help me, it was something that I'm grateful for every day and something that I actually took for granted whenever I was at Evansville, that I'd always have someone to eat with me or help me every time that I needed it. Because when I went to graduate school, I wasn't able to find students to help me. And there were many days that I'd be standing down by my dorm, uh, standing down in my dorm by the elevator, by the cafeteria that we had in our dorm, Thompson Hall, asking students if they wanted to help me. And they'd be walking past me or just not saying anything or saying they didn't want to help me. And that really taught me to never take things in life for granted because you never know when those things might be taken away from you. Now for most, if not all of you, you hope to make it up to Cleveland to play for the you know, Major League team there. You know, maybe you'll make it up to a different team one day. Maybe you know, things, things won't work out like, and you, know, you can't make it up to you know, Major League Baseball for whatever reason. You know, personally, um, understanding that uh, for myself is, is really hard to understand because I've always understood that I'm never going to be able to play Major League Baseball. You know, maybe I'll be able to drive a car someday if they can make cars that can be driven by voice activation or touch or things like that. But for me, what, what all of you guys are able to do now with being able to see 
that's something that I've always wanted to be able to do in 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 you know my life. And I mean, if I am able to see at some point, I mean, part of me hopes that I can, so I can see my family, you know, all the friends who brought baseball to me, Marco, when I listened to your guys' games, my good friend Mike Caps, who does uh, AAA for Houston. Uh, he's been doing that for, he used to be AAA for the Texas Rangers. He's, he's one of their commentators. So, you know, being able to do that is, is something that I've always wanted to, you know, be able to do. So the fact that you're able to see every day, you're, you know, you're already champions for me. You're, you're doing the one thing in, in, you know, my life that I've, that I've really wanted to be able to do. So, you know, don't ever take that take that for granted and you know, always use use the platform that, that you've been given as you know star athletes first round picks double-a triple-a you know major league to talk about you know whatever it is that's important to you you know Mitch your outfielder uh, he likes to give shoes to individuals who who you know um, need shoes through his uh, shoe contract you know and, and he's done a good job talking about that you know there's there's 20 25 30 30 more of you on this team use your platform that you're given to talk about whatever is important to to you and you know share that like yeah you know you have to go into the silly press conference and talk about how you could have fielded the ball better or you had four four fastballs that were hit for home runs over the crazy right field net and got over the the uh, line um, past the first three rows of seats that Marco has been talking about on the radio yesterday so answer those questions and then say hey we also had someone come in who spoke to us who was blind and and you know, I learned I learned this from his speech. Or I'm not going to take this for granted now when I think about someone who can see or has special needs because, you know, so often fans of these sports teams, they just get caught up on, oh, you know, Cleveland didn't win yesterday, or Mr. Terry Francona needs needs to manage the the bullpen better. But they don't know the stories of you know what what Mr. Terry Francona has done to help people who have special needs. Oh, my friend Clint Hurdle, he's the manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and some of you may want to know why in the heck is, is Mr. Hurdle still managing Pittsburgh when he's had a chance to take you know, better jobs across the country or you know, leave at various points. But he took the Pittsburgh job not solely for himself, but for his daughter Madison, who has special needs, Prater Willie's syndrome. And the hospital where Madison gets her treatment there in Pittsburgh is the best one in the country. So you know, Mr. Hurdle took the, the Pirates coaching job so he could you know, be able to have that for her. And you know, that shows true sacrifice. And you know, that's what people should always try to do in sports. Now, I told you about you know, some of the struggles I had in graduate school. So I finished up in graduate school. I was still struggling to find jobs working in sports because there were parts of jobs I can't do, like graphics social media, things like that. Now, that was say about 10% of a job, but because I couldn't do that 10%, people wouldn't let me do the 90% that I could do. So I began emailing sports teams, figuring out the email formats for the Orioles, your Cleveland Indians, Texas Rangers. I know all the email formats, so if you need to get a hold of a manager or a coach, let me know, I can tell you the email. So Baltimore, <coughs> with their MLB team, was the first ever uh, sports team that I started doing specialized programs for for fans who have special needs. John, who's the son of the owner, Peter, had me out to a game in 2016 and I threw out a first pitch to my good friend Mr. Paul Molitor who used to manage the Minnesota Twins but you know I guess the staff there didn't think he was doing a good enough job and needed somebody younger to do all the analytics stuff and they unfortunately let uh, Mr. Molitor go after, after last season but it was a great experience throwing out the first pitch to him and I've gotten to do so many amazing things with the Orioles. Some of you may have seen last year where the Orioles wore Braille on their jerseys to help, to help show others how important it is for people who are blind to, to learn how to read Braille. And, and that was a program that I helped set up. It was actually one of the proudest moments that I've ever had in sports. You know, help, Helping Baltimore become the first ever team in sports to wear Braille on their jerseys. I also do programs across the country with my nonprofit, the Beautiful Lives Project. Our website's beautifullives.org if you ever want to look at it. And we give people who have special needs the opportunity to play with sports teams across the country. So if that's something you want to do there in Akron, maybe you do it already. If you don't, I can set it up. We can do it. We can do it, you know, wherever else. You guys have friends all across the country who you've been drafted with or are playing other places. I'll set it up, you know, wherever people want to do it because giving those people the opportunity who might be blind or deaf or having autism to play on the field with, with sports teams, it really shows them that there's people who really care about them and it really gives them a chance to forget 
that they might never be able to see or you know that they might be in a wheelchair for the rest of their life and it's especially harder for someone who's become um, who's had to have these challenges halfway through their life because they've had half of their life where you know they've been able to see or they haven't been paralyzed and now they're paralyzed or they can't see and everyone looks at them differently or they're scared to to learn how to read braille or things like that so you know there are many things you could do for my nonprofit profit if you wanted you know we could always take more funds if you want to donate you know you could donate we could do more playing on the field programs but I would say the most important thing you could do is you know spread your knowledge and your love for baseball and helping people across the country and the next time you see a fan who has special needs even though he may have a heart for he or she may have a heart for yard goats jersey on and they aren't cheering for you at all walk over to them, you know, throw the baseball with them, spend some time with them, talk to them, or if you see someone you know, wandering around your concourse there, you know, in Akron or on the road game who, uh, you know, might be blind or in a wheelchair and they may seem lost, so you may ask them if they need help. Now, he or she may be upset at you for asking if they need help and they, you know, may not really want help, so they may yell at you, but you shouldn't not ask the second person because the second person, they might really need your help. There was one time in graduate school where I got lost, and it's in the Midwest, so as the Midwestern guys know, it's cold out there. And it was about negative uh, three degrees outside one day in Macomb, Illinois, when I went to graduate school. And I was lost outside for five minutes trying to get to the building where my class is at, Brophy Hall. And um, I, um, I was lost, and I didn't have gloves on my hand because I got to feel where I'm going when I'm using my cane. And my hands were starting to freeze up, and I was concerned I was going to get frostbite, and I wasn't ever able to read Braille again. I was asking all these people if they wanted to help me. And all these people walked by me, you know, didn't, didn't help me or nothing. And then there was, there was this one girl, I spoke to her uh, group a couple weeks earlier. She saw my speech, it really changed her life. She helped me, got me back to my building, and, you know, that, that, that really showed me how, A, you know, speeches like this can really change people's lives, and B, how, you know, she told me that, she would have been nervous, you know, coming up to ask me if I needed something had she not seen me speak to her group two weeks beforehand. So, you know, now that you've seen me speak, hopefully you'll be more willing to, you know, help others who may have challenges or things like that. So, you've had enough of me talking. I think it's time to play a game now. I'd like to have two of you come up here and we're going to play a little fun game that I play with all my sports teams who I speak to and companies as well. Hey. I'm Nolan. Call? Call. And Nolan Jones. Yes, sir. You've got me some outfielders. Infield. You're infield. That's right. You're outfield. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Alright, so who wants the hard job? Who wants the easy job? <laughs> the hard one. Alright. Alright, so I guess you've been done by default given the easy one. We can always trade off though. So um, Alex, right? Yeah. So you're doing the easy job on Nolan. You might want to come back up here so you can watch this. Alright, so Alex is uh, gonna go hide somewhere, go hide somewhere in this clubhouse, well, somewhere easy-ish. And I'm gonna find you using my cane okay. with my eyes closed. Now, my eyes are always closed, so it is no big deal to me, but you're gonna have to close your eyes when I'm done and try to find Alex, and the rest of you are gonna make sure no one doesn't get hurt, because you don't need another player on the, the injured list for Marco to read off during the broadcast. <laughs> and um, I am ready for my sentence, Alex, whenever you're hidden. I would like a compound sentence, please, so I could have more of a, of a chance to set my base to find you. You need to say compound sentence. I like baseball. That was not a compound sentence. <laughs> <laughs> you all have to move. It's, it, it, um, it's, it's fine if you don't move. It actually kind of ruins the game if you do. Um, Rubber ducks are going to win. Some noise so I can come yep. bring this back to you. Come up over here. This is for you. So now Alex is going to hide somewhere different for you. I have to close my eyes here? Uh, yeah, otherwise you'll be able to see him and it would kind of defeat the purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex is now hiding somewhere new. When you think you're ready, you can tell him that you're ready, but if Alex isn't ready, he won't give you a sentence, of course, and when he's ready, he will just spit it out for you. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Can you tell Nolan a nice sentence, please? That's longer than what you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> Nolan Jones is a great baseball player. 
you want a second sentence, you can ask any time you feel like you need it now. Try not to break the cane. <laughs> sentence. <laughs> you can do it. Are you moving? No. <laughs> 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 you went to the back of the room and then you missed me so much you came back up to see me again. <clears throat> Your voice is throwing me off. someone guide you to him? I mean, it's up to you if you want to keep trying. <laughs> so, what did that teach you about things you could use in baseball, but more importantly in your life outside of baseball, Nolan? Well, that was very difficult. It was, I mean, I needed a lot of People, I mean, I needed him to talk a couple times. To, it would have been a lot easier if someone just told me. Is there anything outside of baseball you would take that to to use with? I mean, like I would definitely. I mean, I would, others? Yeah, I would definitely be more willing to to help somebody I saw that was either blind or anyone looked like they may need. Needs, yeah, yeah, anyone with special needs. Period. That may look like they need help because that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming up here. You can stay up here if you want. You can go back to your chair, whichever makes you happy. So your manager uh, has got me on the 20-minute time limit. I'm down to four minutes. So I'll close, then I'll take some questions. Hope you all have questions or not. I'll just call you out, and we'll get some questions. So I think uh, you should never take things uh, in your life uh, for granted. You should always try to help others and you know, always be grateful of you know what, what, what you've been able to do. And if you're not able to make it to the major leagues or, you know, Whatever you want to do in baseball, just you know, realize there's always people out there who might be blind or deaf in wheelchairs who would do anything to be able to do. I mean, the baseball stuff would be nice, but just you know, having the fact that you know, you don't have to have a cane every day or have Marco guide you everywhere. You know, that's that's something you should be grateful for and, and think about uh, every day. So whatever questions you might have, we're down to three and a half minutes, then you'll have to go hit. Hopefully we can throw some balls on the field because I know my guys uh, here want to get some film of me throwing with, with some of you and maybe we can work that out. So questions about whatever, I think we got four minutes. As uh, baseball, is baseball your favorite sport or how did that So about? baseball is my favorite sport to commentate because of how many stories I can tell. But um, when I like a challenge, I like commentating soccer matches because the offside call and the other calls <coughs> confuse me to no end. <laughs> Do you have a favorite rubber duck player from listening in from what Marco says or no? Um, oh boy. I would have to say probably Mitch because of the work, you know, that he does with, with you know giving away shoes to people who, who uh, need that sort of thing. But obviously, you know, some of the others on this team may do that and it just didn't get mentioned in all the articles. 
in the YouTube videos that I read about all of you, so it's kind of unfair picking Mitch without knowing the stories of all 25 of you. But he's my somewhat favorite for right now. <laughs> Coaches, anything? Um, Can you tell the guys how many days weeks, months, years did you take to have this opportunity that you're getting to talk to us? How many emails did you send? For how long? So I've been out here in uh, Britain, Connecticut for three years. I've spoke to all the teams in the uh, uh, Bees League, so Long Island Ducks, Somerset Patriots, no, Somerset, Brett Jody won't let me, scratch them. Uh, New Britain Bees, probably, probably five out of the teams. Um, in the eight teams that are in the Bees League. So I have emailed all of the teams, including Hartford. I'm kind of friends with their manager because he works for my friend Dick Montfort and Bud Black, the owner and the manager of the Rockies. He's never let me speak to his Yard Goats team. And uh, you guys have been the first ever team who's let me speak to your team who have came in here to, to play in Hartford. I almost didn't, didn't do it this summer because I, I emailed all the managers who came in here last year. So I think you guys came in here last year. I don't remember who was managing you. Wasn't it Wallace? Uh, uh, Mr. Tony Wallace? Manzolino. Okay, okay. Last year. So I emailed him, nothing from him. <coughs> emailed all the other managers last year, nothing. So when you emailed me back, it actually made my month of June. It was the best thing for my month of June. And I had 12 playing on the field days and raised $5,000 and everything else. But, you know, it just shows keep on trying and, you know, you'll, you'll eventually get to do what you want to do. So hopefully this can springboard me to more speeches to the Portland Sea Dogs or Trenton Thunder or all the other fun double-A teams who are playing here in Hartford because I enjoy talking to baseball players and hanging out on the field and sitting with commentators like Marco who bring baseball to um, to me through through the words that they paint on the radio. How are you able to fill the time? Uh, so my phone talks to me and when my microphone fell off, I asked your manager to put it back on and it fell off again, so my ESPN guy just came to put it on. Thank you, uh, uh, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy is the gum chewer with the southern accent, by the way. Um, so I had to see how much time I had left because I was having so much fun doing this because I've been waiting on this for five weeks now that I was just enjoying telling stories about everything. I could have used my phone, but Marco's filming the speech on my phone and taping it on his fancy little uh, digital uh, recorder as well, so he's, he's double taping my speech. <laughs> well, Rice, thank race you. Day? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. What? Are you born and raised in Connecticut? No. Thank goodness. I was born in the Midwest, <laughs> and I still live in the Midwest when I'm not here, so nine months I'm back in the glorious Midwest. These are my three somewhat rough Connecticut months. That's why I need baseball teams to speak to and, and hang out with. It's something to look forward to. If I had to live out here all year, I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> Three months is about two weeks too much. Anybody else? All right. Well, Bryce, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Really appreciate it. Thank you.